Before returning to the trenches, Walter took the opportunity to be reunited with his brother Edward. Both men had come a long way since they were separated at the orphanage, and Edward had also had to overcome racial prejudice, but had settled in Scotland. Following in Walter's footsteps, I've come to Scotland to track down Edward's remaining family. On my journey, I've examined historical documents, scoured newspaper reports, and marveled at what Walter achieved. But it's difficult getting to know who Walter really was. He didn't get married or have children, and I want to get beyond the official records. So I've come to this small town in the north of Scotland in the hope that Edward's family can give me a sense of what Walter was really like. And I met up with 91-year-old Duncan, who married Edward Tull's daughter and is now the proud keeper of the family archive. That's him. That's so. Edward. Right. And there's Walter on leave, possibly his last leave. There's a family resemblance there, isn't there? That's right. I mean, yes. I, I've, well, I've mentioned the Tull jawline before. That's very yes, much an evidence right. there, isn't it? Yes. yes. Edward was really one of the finest men I ever knew. Wonderful man. I mean, that fastened on to my enormous regard for Walter. Duncan and his children are Walter's closest surviving family, and their grandfather, Edward, often spoke of his little brother, Walter. How well did you know Edward? Grandpa died when I was four, so right, I didn't okay. know him all that well, but I mean, I do remember him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember him being a lot of fun and very kind of warm person. Were they very similar as personalities? Yes, there was a, a, a strength of character and an outlook that was the same, a sort of, you know, moral stability and, and resolve. What abides with me is that certainly right from the beginning he spoke about Walter and about their particular closeness. Was there a sense of pride that his brother was this great sports hero? Those are my, you know, my early memories of both my grandfather Edward uh, and Walter, Walter, you know, pride that you had a grand uncle that was a professional footballer. Nobody else knew about him then, but, you know, his pictures were on the wall and, you know, it was part of the kind of family history. And uh, sure. as, as children, you know, you, we were always proud of him you know, being in the... Uh, the first black commissioned officer. Having become an officer, Walter led by example and undoubtedly earned the respect of the white men he commanded. He faced the swamp-like mud and mustard gas attacks at Passchendaele. And on the Italian front, Walter showed true courage and leadership. Second Lieutenant Tull was ordered to lead a group of men across the dangerous, fast-flowing river Piave and attack the forward positions of German and Austrian troops. He led from the front and brought his men back without a single casualty. And in amongst the family photos and the war memorabilia, I spotted a remarkable testimony to Walter's bravery that day. What, what about this document here? That is the citation by the commanding officer. Um, after his crossing of the river Piava, I wish to place on record my appreciation of your gallantry and coolness. During the raid, you took the covering party of the main body across and brought them back without a casualty, in spite of heavy fire. I can't imagine the fear that Walter must have had to overcome to lead his men across that icy river on New Year's Day 1918. The fighting around the Piave River was crucial in holding back the Germans. And by leading a successful mission behind enemy lines, Walter was truly heroic. And when a major writes such a glowing citation, a medal usually follows. But Walter never received that medal. His family are well aware of his bravery. But here, amongst his closest relatives, he is remembered not only as a war hero, but as part of a loving family which is perhaps what Walter would have wanted most. This is one of the perhaps last photographs taken of them together. He declared, I mean, how much, how close Walter and he were. And I was just very moved by the, by the story. So close was the bond between the Tull brothers 
that before returning to the front line, Walter made plans to move to Scotland after the war, to be closer to Edward, and to resume his football career with Glasgow Rangers. But Walter never got the chance. The war that was supposed to be over by Christmas was now into its third year. And amidst the mud and the shelling, Walter wrote to his brother. Dear Eddie, Fritz was shelling the back area like a demon. And after dodging about from trench to trench, we got fed up and struck across country. Now one mass of shell holes. I pushed for the nearest village. I must have been within 200 yards of the place when I nearly collapsed. After a rest, I proceeded on my journey, reaching the transport lines at about eight o'clock. I got into bed. All the guns in France couldn't wake me. Love to all. Yours affectionately, Walter. In March 1918, Walter was sent back here to the Somme. It was becoming clear that the Germans were going to lose the war. And in a last desperate attempt to break through Allied lines, the German army launched the Spring Offensive. The fighting became increasingly bloody and the Allies desperately defended their positions. Walter and his men put up fierce resistance. These fields are where Walter's story ends. On the 25th of March, 1918, an advancing German soldier took aim, pulled the trigger and fired on a British officer. The bullet hit Walter in the neck and he fell into the mud of the Somme. He never got up. Almost a month later, the news reached Walter's brother, Edward. When the word had come through, I remember his words. And all that went through his mind was, Walter is dead. My brother Walter is dead. And, you know, that, I always remember him saying that. <laughs> That was the worst moment of my life when I knew my brother Walter was dead. The worst moment of my life. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, can, I can imagine. In the midst of the battle, Walter's men risked their lives attempting to recover his body. But they were unsuccessful and Walter became one of the many whose final resting place remains a muddy field on the Somme. This is the Faubourg Damien Memorial, dedicated to the servicemen whose bodies were never recovered. There are over 33,000 names on these walls, each with their own heartbreaking and heroic stories. But for me, Walter's story is my way of understanding the sacrifice of a generation. They say death doesn't discriminate. And here there is no black and white, just a lost generation, all of whom should be remembered. But discrimination continued when the war ended, there was a victory parade in London. Black soldiers were demobbed early and only a single battalion took part, hidden at the back of the parade. Three weeks after Walter's death, Walter's brother, Edward, received a letter from a second lieutenant, Picard. Allow me to say how popular he was throughout the battalion. He was brave and conscientious. He had been recommended from the military cross and had certainly earned it. Walter's still waiting for his medal. According to the War Office, 
the Military Cross was to be awarded to junior officers in recognition of gallantry and distinguished services in action. Lieutenant Tull's citation stated he had acted with gallantry and coolness in spite of heavy fire. And as I returned to England, I realized that there was one big question that remained unanswered. Should Tull have received that medal? Yep, in another time, another place, he would have received it. He should receive it. They realized this guy shouldn't be there. You know, and when, they, when this, these papers reached the desk of the, the civil servant in the war office for confirmation, he said, well, why is this guy an officer? He's black, you know, you have to be of pure European descent according to the manual of military law. Without official recognition, Walter's story was neglected, forgotten, and gradually faded from British history. Somebody who was a hero in the First World War, because they happened to be black, nobody talks about him. The first black person to be commissioned in the British Army, surely there should be something, and he should be somebody that everybody has heard of. It's as if uh, black people and their contribution doesn't exist. Having followed in Walter's footsteps, I returned to my life in London, wondering if Walter was destined to remain a forgotten hero. But my journey didn't end at the war cemeteries in France. Since I started making this program, I've realized that actually there's a huge interest in the story. Finally, Britain wants to know all about Walter Tull. There's now a growing campaign for Walter to be awarded a posthumous military cross, with over 51 MPs having signed an early day motion. The football world too has now recognized his contribution to the game with a memorial in Northampton and the main road to the stadium renamed in his honor. And back in Folkestone, in the very primary school Walter attended, the kids are finally learning about their famous ex-pupil. Oh, what a welcome. Put your hands up if you heard of Walter Tom. All three of you, right, we're off to a great start. What advice would you give to Walter? Just if keep, he was leaving the school. Just keep strong. To be strong and just kind of hold all that sadness in. Keep on going and prove that, like, that you're the best. <laughs> to prove all people are equal? Yeah. Absolutely. Our history is largely the stories we tell our children. And unlike when I was growing up, at least now some kids are being taught about a black British hero. Walter's story exposes some uncomfortable truths about British attitudes to race. But it's only by fully understanding the past that we can learn history's lessons. But I'll leave those arguments to the academics. For me, it's enough that we are now finally remembering Walter Tull. <laughs>